Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at writing linear equations in standard form this time. And if you recall, standard form is this one. It's ax plus by equals c with a bunch of little stipulations. But worry about the format most of all. It's just when x and y are on the same side. It's x, y equals some number, okay? And the order there is important. Should be x first, then the y, then the equals, then a number, okay? There's a bunch of little stipulations. Um, we'll kind of take care of these as we go, but really, they are not as important as anything else, okay? Uh, if you have the order of this thing right, the, the x, y equals, and then the, the number, the rest of this stuff is not super important, okay? Um, some of this stuff will take care of itself, but the, the gist of it here is this. So it says A is a whole number, B and C are integers, A, B, and C are not zero. There are no common factors between them. Really, let me summarize this a little bit. Really, the, the reason for this is basically you're not supposed to have any fractions, so no fractions. Okay? So we get it in the right order, and then we get rid of fractions. And then A is not supposed to be negative, so no negative for X. Okay? That really summarizes those couple things. This guy right here, the, the whole zero thing, that's not something you even have to worry about. It'll take care of itself as we go to, to deal with this thing. You'll see that if anything's a, a zero there, um, well, and really C could be a zero, um, but then uh, that, that, that would be okay. Um, but A and B, if either one of those is zero, we're talking about a vertical or a horizontal line, all right? Again, don't worry too much about those stipulations. And then this guy, I'm not even going to care if you can figure that guy out. If you do it, I'm going to be really impressed, but nobody uh, on earth is going to care. Um, no common factor between A, B, and C. In other words, if you can divide everything by something, divide it out, all right? Um, but again, don't worry about these as much as just getting in the right order. If you can get X, Y, then equals, and a number, you are in pretty uh, good shape, all right? And then, yeah... I will show you how to get rid of the fractions and, and make a, uh, the A value so it's not negative, all right? But that's not a big deal. Worry the most about the order. If you can do this, X value, Y value, then equals a number, you're in good shape, all right? The only time you'll ever have to worry about the stipulations in standard form is in a math class, all right? Standard form equations do get used in real applications, but nobody in the real world will care if there's fractions, if there's negatives in certain places, okay? The only thing that will matter will be the order. We'll worry about some of those stipulations, but not all of them, okay? For example, if I look at these guys, it just says write each of them in standard form, so I have to get X and Y on the same side, and right now, like in this one, X and Y are on two different sides, right? So to get them on the same side, see, I always look for the number. See the, the constant term, the y, or sorry, the, the 4 in this one? The 4 is the thing that's supposed to be by itself, so let's get rid of everything that's around it. If I want to get rid of a negative 1 half x, I'm going to add 1 half x to each side. And when you look at this, see over here, these guys cancel. So I'm left with the 4, and that's what I want. I want the number by itself. But on the other side, I can't add an X and a Y. They're not the same kind of term. So I just leave them separated. I leave them as a, a Y and a 1 half X. But make sure you put it in the right order. Instead of writing Y plus 1 half X, I'm going to write the 1 half X first and then the positive Y. And remember, you don't see a sign in front of Y. It means it's positive, so it's a plus sign. Okay? So now I've got the right order. And again, if you get to this point, fantastic. You're in great shape. But now the little stipulation is, oh, I'm not supposed to have a fraction. Well, Mr. Jansen hopefully told us long ago, and hopefully remember this, I can always get rid of fractions by multiplying through by the common denominator. Because remember, a fraction bar is a division sign. See, that x has a divided by 2. How do you get rid of dividing by 2? You multiply by 2. And I have to do it to each side. So whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Over here, I have to distribute. So that gives me an x because, again, 2 times 1 half, it's like 2 divided by 2, all right? Plus 2y equals an 8, and I'm done, okay? That's true standard form because I got rid of the fractions, okay? But again, the order is the most important thing, x, y equals number, okay? If I look at the next one, uh, as soon as I think about rearranging equation, it's like I'm solving for something, all right? 
um, I always kind of follow that approach of simplify and then solve. So I'm going to simplify by doing my distributive property. And usually that's, that's your first instinct is to distribute. So that's a good one. So here that's a 3x and a plus 6. And now once again, I want to get the, the constant term by itself. And so maybe I start moving the constants together. So maybe here I would add the 3 to each side. All right? Which is a little uncharacteristic of I me. Mean, usually I deal with variables first. And if you look at this, that should look familiar. This is uh, slope intercept form. And notice the original problem was point slope form. And we already know how to do this. I went from uh, uh, point slope form to slope intercept form. Now, if I want to get the 9 by itself, I have to get rid of the 3x. So I'm going to subtract 3x from each side. Okay. And once again, think about the order here. I don't want to leave this as y minus 3x. I'm going to write it as negative 3x plus y. And I'm going to say that equals a 9. And if you leave your answer like that, you know what? I'm cool with that. That's going to be fine. It's not technically standard form, but who cares? All right? If you want true standard form, and the only reason I show you this is it might come up on a standardized test. But again, for my purposes, I would, I would give you credit for this answer. I'm going to divide each side by a negative 1. All right? I'm going to essentially change all the signs so that it's a 3x minus y equals negative 9. And the only reason I'm doing that is because technically the x value is supposed to be positive. Okay? But again, if you leave your answer like this guy right here, this step, that's going to be okay with me. Same thing over here. If you leave your answer like this, I'm going to be all right with that. Okay? And so hopefully you're looking at these two examples thinking, Okay, Mr. Jansen, that first one was point uh, slope-intercept form, and I changed it to uh, standard form. And the second one was point-slope. I changed it to slope-intercept and then changed it to standard form. And if you think about the last couple lessons, this is what we've been doing. We've been writing things in point-slope form. In the previous lesson, we learned how to go from point-slope form to slope-intercept form. Well, now, standard form, I just keep the process going, all right? So just like writing any other equation, I'm going to start in point-slope form. I'm going to convert that to slope-intercept, and then I'm going to go from slope-intercept to standard form, okay? So I'm just continuing the same process, all right? For example, if we look at this guy, it says write the equation in standard form of the line that passes through the point negative 3, 1, and has a slope of negative 2. So if I do point-slope form... Remember, I do the opposite of the x and the y value from the point. So instead of a 1, it's going to be a minus 1. Equals the slope is negative 2. And then x. And then I do the opposite of that negative 3. So I do a plus 3. Remember, that's how point slope form works. It's the opposite pieces of the ordered pair in there. So now this is the equation of the line. It's just not in the format I wanted. Okay, And so I run through my progression. I start with point slope. Well, I'm going to use my distributive property to convert this to slope-intercept. And if you remember, it's always the same two steps to convert this thing. I distribute, and then I move that constant term right here. Let's add the 1 to each side. And right away, if this question had asked for this thing in slope-intercept form, well, here it is. That's slope-intercept form right there. So if it asked for, the, for this thing in slope-intercept form, it would be y equals a negative 2x minus 5. But it didn't ask for slope-intercept form. It says standard form. So I keep going. Now i got to get the, uh, the x over on the same side as y. And again, the nice thing about going through the same progression, I'm going to add that 2x to each side, is it'll always be the same steps. Like if I always convert this thing to slope-intercept form, sorry, I forgot to write my 2x there. I'm talking too much. If I always convert this thing from point-slope form to slope-intercept, well, to get from slope-intercept to standard form, it's a matter of just moving that x value, okay? If I have a negative x value, I add it to get rid of it. If I have a positive x value, I subtract it to get rid of it, and that's it, okay? So there it is, standard form. But notice all three formats are here. Point-slope form, so if this question asked for point-slope form, there it is. Slope-intercept form, if the question asks for slope-intercept form, there it is. And if it asks for standard form, well, there it is, okay? But it's the same thing that we've been doing. If I look at the next one, it says, write the equation in standard form of the line that passes through the points 5, negative 1, and 3, 9. Well, this time, I don't know what the slope is, so I have to find the slope. So let's do my slope formula. Ready? I do the uh, second y value minus the first y value 
over the second x value minus the first x value. And so here to find the slope, let's see, that's going to be a 9 minus a negative 1. Be careful with the signs. Over a uh, 3 minus a 5. Uh, up here, this is like adding the opposite. So that's a 10. Down here, you could do the same thing. It's like adding the opposite. 3 plus a negative 5 is a negative 2. And when I divide, that's a negative 5. Okay? So now I'm just going to write this thing in point-slope form. So I do y, and I can pick either of these ordered pairs. I'm just going to use the first one. If you use the second one, that's okay. Remember, we can have different versions of the same line in point-slope form. Uh, so the opposite of the y value, there's a plus 1. I write down my slope. The opposite of the x value is a minus 5. And there it is. There's point-slope form. If this question had asked for that, there it is. And now to get to slope-intercept form, remember your two steps. It's distribute. So negative 5x plus 25. And now I have to get y by itself. I'm going to subtract the 1. And here it is. Here's slope-intercept form. If the question had asked for slope-intercept form, I'd be done right now, but it asked for standard form. To get from uh, slope-intercept form to standard form, it's just a matter of moving that x value. So right here, if I have a negative 5x, well, I want to get rid of that. I'm going to add 5x. But notice, it's the same couple steps over and over again. So if you do this just a couple times, you should get really used to it. All right? But we're always starting off the same way. You always start off in point-slope form. From point-slope form, you rewrite it in slope-intercept form. And then from slope-intercept, you write it in standard form. Okay? But really, it's three steps after you get the equation written. Distribute get y by itself. There's two steps. That's slope-intercept form, and then move the x value. That's standard form, okay? If I look at the next one, again, same kind of thing. This one, I'm going to have to kind of count out the slope this time. So for this one, if I look at the slope, again, just identifying some ordered pairs that this thing goes through right here, and it looks like the next one's right here. So it looks like I go down 4 over 3. So when I write that slope, it's down 4. That's negative 4 over 3. So there's my slope. And then I can just choose any one of these. And so the interesting thing here is the two points that were given were intercepts. I'm going to start with the y-intercept just out of curiosity, just to kind of show you what happens. But this one right here, this is the ordered pair 0, 4. You can start off in point-slope form. <clears throat> the opposite of the y-value there is a negative 4. Negative 3 fourths x. Oh, sorry, I missed my parenthesis. Uh, and then the uh, minus 0, okay? And I can go through the same progression. I can distribute. That's a negative 4 uh, thirds. Sorry, I've been saying 3 fourths, negative 4 thirds x uh, plus 0. And now to get y by itself, I'm going to add the 4 to each side. And remember, this is really the situation where I could have gone right to slope-intercept form. But notice, even though I went through the motions of getting, uh, of putting this in point-slope form and then rearranging it uh, to slope-intercept, I still get the same thing, okay? And notice right here, the y-intercept, remember this 4 right here? This is my b value. And I even said when we did this, when we had those easy ones that we can go right to point-slope, uh, uh, sorry, slope-intercept form, it's still okay to write it in point-slope form, okay? But now to write this thing in standard form, i got to move that x, so I'm going to add the 4 thirds x to each side. And I end up with this. I end up with 4 thirds x plus y equals a 4. And again, for our purposes, that would be an acceptable answer for me. I don't care about the fraction, but if you're on a standardized test, they're going to want you to do this. Oh, that divided by 3, let's get rid of it by multiplying by 3. Okay, And when you multiply by 3 here, you get a 4x plus 3y. Nobody cares but math teachers. Okay, Oh, that fraction's gone. Hooray. All right? All right, but again, just get the things in the right order, and you'll be in good shape. If I look at this guy, it says write the equation a line that uh, passes through the point 0.46 and has a slope of 0. So once again, I'm going to start off in uh, point-slope form. The opposite of the y value is a 6. The 
opposite of the x value is a minus 4. And now from here, I go through my steps. I distribute that 0. That's going to give me a 0x, which is just 0, minus another 0, which is just 0. And even though things look a little weird right now because there's no x value anymore, I'm still going to go through the same motions and say, OK, to convert this to slope-intercept form, I'm going to add the 6 to each side. And that gives me y equals 6. And this is the equation, this line. Uh, notice the, the question here didn't say to write the equation in standard form, because this one can't be written in standard form. This is the equation, that line. But remember, that's a special equation. That's a horizontal line. Okay, And this is that special case, that, that stipulation of a, b, and c can't be 0. This is what happens when a or b is 0. Okay, um, It gives us a, a, either a vertical or a horizontal line. And that's OK. All right, And really, the key there is notice it didn't ask for a specific format. That's usually a hint that this is going to be one of those special ones, either a vertical or a horizontal line. Okay. If I look at the next one, same kind of thing. The slope is undefined. This one I can't write in point-slope form because I, there, I don't have a symbol to represent a slope of undefined that I can plug in for m. Okay. But if we kind of think along the same lines, this one have oh sorry, jumped on me. This one having a slope of zero means it's a horizontal line, and horizontal lines are always y equals a number. Well, this one undefined means I have a vertical line. Okay, so maybe let me make a note of that. And remember, vertical lines are always x equals a number. Remember, horizontal lines are y equals number. Uh, vertical lines are x equals a number. Well. Look at the x and the y value here. Here I have an x value of negative 2, and I have a y value of negative 3. If you remember why uh, horizontal lines are y equals a number, it's because the y value always stays the same. Okay. The reason that an undefined a vertical line is x equals numbers is because x always stays the same. Well, I see from that ordered pair that the x value is a negative 2. So guess what? x is always going to equal a negative 2. That's the equation of my vertical line, OK? And uh, you know, if you're really unsure about it, just draw a quick sketch of the graph. It's not hard to do, OK? Negative 2, negative 3 right here. There's the point, and I'm supposed to have an undefined line. There it is. Well, think about the equation of that line, OK? It's a vertical line at the x value of negative 2, so it's x equals negative 2. And you could have done the same thing with the last one. But again, those are kind of the special cases that you just got to watch out for, OK? The general idea here for standard form, if we kind of break away from these last two examples and think about the rest that we've done, standard form, remember the, the format. It's x, y equals number. All right, make sure you get in the right order. When you write these equations, start with point-slope form, rewrite that in slope-intercept form, and then one more time, rewrite in standard form. Okay, So always for all of these, start with point-slope form and start rearranging it from there. Okay.